and look out at the New England countryside, I'm struck by a powerful sense of nostalgia. This place with its orderly and natural landscape seems somehow at the heart of what is best in the American experience. New England has inspired some of our finest poetry and art. Perhaps I have this feeling of absolute security because it is so peaceful here, so fundamental and so very close to the earth. Nothing dangerous, evil, or violent could possibly happen here. But before you go back to reread your Robert Frost, let me tell you a story about this place. It has not always been the tranquil poem it appears to be. In fact, during one period of time, this pastoral setting was the stage for the playing out of intense hatreds. A kind of violent social madness attacked the people that we would not see on the shores again for a very long time. It began here on the land. At the end of the 17th century, this land represented a beautiful utopian dream for Europeans. Here, the poor, the persecuted, and the landless could build a new life. They could escape the economic and social chains of Europe. The lands provided an opportunity for a fresh start. And so thousands of colonists risked the adventure, came to New England, claimed the land, and built something of enduring value. Seldom, if ever, were a people's expectations higher. They were confronted by one serious problem. Somebody else already owned the land. Among these prior New England landlords were the Wampanoags, an Indian tribe that was allied to the first Plymouth settlers. By the 1670s, the Wampanoags were led by a man named Metacomet. The English called him King Philip. For some years, Metacomet had watched the relationship deteriorate between the New England tribes and the colonists. The Indians suffered repeated humiliations and the settlers steadily encroached on the Indians' historic lands. In 1675, three Wampanoags were dragged before a Puritan court, found guilty of murder on dubious testimony, and then executed. Metacomet had had enough. The struggle that followed was called King Philip's War. King Philip's War was devastating for the colonists and the Indians. Several thousand colonists and twice as many Indians were killed. Of some 90 Puritan towns, 52 were attacked and 13 were completely destroyed. Some 1,200 homes lay in ruins. Indian society was devastated even more completely. Nearly an entire generation of young Indian men were annihilated. Many of the survivors, including Metacomet's wife and son, were sold into slavery. King Philip's War inaugurated a period of towering passions, chaos, and social instability. For a moment, reason seemed to have fled. The impact of King Philip's War reached far beyond colonial times. The war demonstrated that any kind of peaceful coexistence between colonist and Indian was very doubtful, if not impossible. The hatreds aroused feelings that did not easily cool. Cool. 